Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we finally found something that can correlate between Talos of Tech and movie reviews. I know, you're probably thinking, Drew, what are you talking about? Oh, Black Mirror, that makes sense, I get it now. So yes, the TV show Black Mirror, which I was very, very late to, in fact, I've only started watching this recently, and as soon as I started watching the show, I had to watch every single episode. For those of you who don't know, Black Mirror, very similar to shows like Twilight Zone, has an independent story within each episode, which means that you can start on season four, episode one and you won't miss anything it'll be like you're watching the show for the first time which by the way that's exactly what I did season four episode one USS Callister was my first episode I was very intrigued my girlfriend Louise actually was into the show and said hey you should try watching this and I knew nothing about it other than the name I had heard of the name before and I was like black I don't know what that's about literally went into it blind into the blackness of the mirror which by the way the black mirror stands for the TV screen when it's off after the show ends and your face is just like what just happened? But anyway, the reason I love this show so much is that it plays a lot with futuristic ideas. I consider myself a futurist. It's one of the reasons that I love making tech videos so much, mostly predicting where things are going to go. I want to be ahead of the curb. I want to know where technology is heading, how it's going to change society. And the one thing that I've always told my friends and family about technology is similar to money. It is not inherently good or evil. It is just powerful. Most movies these days, especially blogs, blockbusters like Age of Ultron will just tell you that, you know, technology, AI, it's dangerous. Even Elon Musk will go ahead and tell you AI is going to change the world, which it is, but I'm not necessarily sure it's just out to get us. Like it's this evil technology that we cannot control. Black Mirror finally is a piece of media that just uses technology as it should be. And in my opinion, the most realistic use of technology is a tool. It is an extension of our own human nature. And in Black Mirror, for the most part, technology Technology is never the villain. It's never about some evil AI, with the exception of Metalhead, the episode where just a killer robot runs around and tries to kill people. But that brings me to a point about Black Mirror, which is that while it has this running theme throughout every episode of sort of like what if situations with technology in the future, if we're able to record our memories and look back on them, or what if we're able to block people in the real world? Just as easy as blocking someone on Twitter, you can have them grayed out in your life. You cannot see them, you cannot hear them. They just appear as static or the FBI suddenly has ways of looking into your brain and seeing exactly what you have seen and then lying, basically trying to hide information from the police means nothing because they will find that information. Those are just a couple of the ideas that these episodes are built around throughout the show that still has that running theme of what if with technology, but with the core message still being technology is not the villain. Human nature, bad people and good people are the drama that holds this show together. The technology is really just a very innovative way of painting a setup or painting a premise for all of these different worlds they build. Because with season four, they kind of start to experiment with the idea that all of these episodes actually took place in the same universe, but they're not very consistent about it. For the most part, you can go ahead into Black Mirror thinking none of these episodes have anything to do with each other. They are completely independent ideas. And in all honesty, that's what I think is the best way to enjoy the show is if you just don't try to connect the dots. Just look at the them as different scenarios throughout time. One of my favorite ones out there, other than the USS Callister, which I just think was really fun because it was playing with this fake Star Trek world of a guy who loved a TV show, so rebuilt the show in a virtual reality simulator so he could be the main character, but then he grabs the DNA off of people in his personal life and loads them into the program. You have to watch it. I, I won't try to explain the whole thing, but a different episode starring Bryce Dallas Howard, Jurassic World star, didn't like that movie, but love this episode of Black Mirror is called Nosedive, where it's very easily, you can tell where they got the idea. Essentially, the writer and director of this episode got into an Uber and realized that once you get out of an Uber ride, they want you to rate your experience. And 90% of the time when you're rating your Uber drive, you kind of take into consideration the social interaction. How much does my driver talk to me? Is he asking too many personal questions? Is he being too closed off? And that affected the rating system of that driver based on social interactions. I can give that man a lower rating, which will result in him making less money with that job. Nosedive is not necessarily an accurate portrayal of where I think the future is going, which keep in mind, that's a very important thing to remember when watching Black Mirror. This is not necessarily predictions that the screenwriters of the show are trying to be accurate on. By the way, Polymatter also did a great video on Black Mirror that I recommend you check out. And he also brought up the great point that books, classic ones like 1984, are not trying to predict the future. They're trying to exaggerate a theory so that 
we can focus on subjects and topics that we wouldn't normally think about. So not that I think in the future, everything will be based on rating each other, but it allows us to dive deeper and elaborate more on the idea that after a social interaction happens, I give you a rating and you give me a rating and the people with better ratings have a better life. They get to buy better houses. They get to apply to better jobs. And Nosedive is all about Bryce Dallas Howard desperately trying to move out of her brother's place by getting enough points. And this involves her being fake with people and trying to be as happy and as optimistic as possible. And it really grabs your attention with the idea of forced positivity. In the future, we will live in a society where if you act nice to people and if you're a good citizen, then you will get nicer things than people who are mean to society and are not nice to people and critique them or may hate them or be disrespectful. You get lower ratings. That means you get a lower lifestyle. Do I personally, Andrew Erickson, think that's where our future's headed? No. I think that's ridiculous. I don't think it would ever work. I don't think a government would ever back that idea. However, this hypothetical that they portray in Black Mirror really gets the gears in your mind turning and it really starts thinking, how would I act in this situation? Now, keep in mind, a lot of this show is very, very dark, very, very R-rated. This is not a family-friendly show, even though I'm talking about it on a family-friendly network. There are some really interesting episodes that I can't really describe to you in detail because of how dark they are, but I still found them at least interesting. And my overall problem with Black Mirror, and even though I'm excited for season five and I'm excited to watch more episodes, I don't really enjoy every single episode. A lot of the time I feel like they had one idea and they couldn't turn it into a whole episode, so they ended up just kind of shoehorning it in a different episode. I don't like it when they do that. And sometimes, while I do say that technology is not the villain of the show, there are episodes where it just kind of ends on a sad note. And the sad note is that technology is going to bring out the worst of us. Not necessarily that it is the problem, but it's going to trigger us to be worser to other humans. Just imagine how hostile and how mean we are to other people on social media like Twitter. How often do people argue on that? Imagine if that side of social media starts taking a part in actual social interactions. You can start blocking people. You can start giving them lower ratings that affects their job and that forces them to act a certain way. Sometimes they'll just end it on a sad note and it's depressing and then it just stops and it kind of reminds me of Shakespeare. It's the reason why I'm not really a big fan of Shakespeare's writing is because I feel like a lot of the time there's not a resolution. To a lot of writers out there and a lot of teachers I talk to out there, a resolution just means the ending. It just means the end result. It doesn't necessarily have to be a happy one. And while I do agree there can be movies with sad endings that are satisfying, I always felt that with Shakespeare, with their endings, they always just felt like, and that's the tragedy, and they all screwed up, and they were dumb people, and then it ends. And I just feel like that's not a satisfying ending. Even though it's sad, that doesn't just mean you can label it tragedy. Now it's art. I disagree with that. I know most people out there would disagree with me on my opinions about that, but this is how I make a living, is telling people what I think, so that's what I'm gonna do. I don't like the specific episodes on Black Mirror, and I'm not gonna spoil it for you. This is spoiler-free talk on Black Mirror. That a lot of the time, I feel like they do that Shakespearean ending where it's just supposed to be tragedy, and this is a problem, and the problem ended up being a terrible thing for humanity. And then the episode just ends, and I'm like, I don't really see what I'm supposed to take away from that, if I'm supposed to be interested in that, or sometimes the ideas or the messages that they use to try to get your gears turning in your brain don't really work for me. A lot of the time it's like, I didn't care about that at all. But regardless, even when they had unsatisfying endings, I was interested in what happened because with this show, we consistently had a writing crew and a directing crew that was passionate about making interesting and unique ideas that we hadn't seen before, of course, with a few exceptions like Metalhead. It really doesn't fit in with the rest of the show. I really don't know why it's there, but I'm super excited for season five, not just because I think every episode will be great. In fact, in season four of Black Mirror, I was actually very disappointed with most of the episode. I didn't find them very satisfying or engaging, but what I do know is that the overall premise and the introduction to these episodes, these new ones they're making, are going to be the writers trying to think of something different, trying to think of something unique that no one's bringing up or that we haven't considered before. And hopefully we'll get a couple endings or a couple premises in there that are interesting and engaging and really start to get you to think. Like, I still don't stop thinking about certain episodes of Black Mirror because of how they made me rethink the future in technology. So if you haven't seen it, I really recommend you do. If you have seen it, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below. 
This has been another episode of Drew Reviews, and if you want me to talk more about the individual episodes of Black Mirror, also let me know, because I would love to dive deeper in these and get into spoilers if I could. Thank you guys for your time, and I hope you all have an excellent day. Take care.